So a few years ago, I made this um, three frame picture frame for one of my neighbors. He obviously put photos of his dogs in there and he only had a horizontal photo for one of them, which is why the frames are all kind of unequal sizes. Well, this Christmas as a present, he asked me to create a similar frame with the exact, side, exact same size outer dimensions but we designed it more like a shadow box because he's putting plaster cast paw prints inside so it will have more depth. Um, so that's basically what this is. Very simple project for anyone looking to make some sort of shadow box style frame. You can amend all of these dimensions if you want your shadow box to be thicker. But I was just making mine out of some um, oak I had laying around. I'm making it an inch and a half thick, but it will also have um, an a, a attached frame, if you will, on the top. And you'll that will make more sense when you see how I've designed this. Very simple. I had the outer dimensions from him, and I just went around and cut my two long sides and my two short sides out of that oak. So the exterior frame is all going to be solid oak. I'm gonna split this into compartments with dados. I'm gonna do that with plywood because you, you will not see it. So I went through and I marked um, some spots on my frame. I basically split it into equal parts and I went through with my radial arm saw and I cut three quarter inch dados onto those sides. You can see in the far right hand corner I'm using a stop. So I'm basically cutting all of these without moving my stop. So that means from either side they'll all be the same. And as long as I glue this together square, all of my inner compartments will also be square. Before I glue this together, I'm going to be putting a backside rabbit on it to um, a attach a backer. The backers I use are usually quarter inch or sometimes if you go by um, quarter inch plywood, it's more like 3 30 seconds inch uh, ply for the back. And I always have that sort of stuff laying around in the shop. So that's all I did. It's um, a quarter inch deep by a, a little over a quarter inch wide for that backer just so I have enough meat on it to attach some screws and that's usually how I decide to hold stuff like this in place. So I just send all of my pieces through. Very simple rabbit on that back side. This design is easier than making a picture frame because I don't have to account for certain measurements because like I said I attach the actual frame um, after this is all glued together. So that is what it looks like um, in place. Can make sure that everything is going to be square and then I could attach um, my partitions. So like I said, these are three quarter inch ply. The reason I did it the way I'm doing it is because like, one, it's a shadow box and two, um, I originally made three separate frames because like I said, they were all different sizes. But since I didn't have to worry about this for that for this, it's easier to make one frame and make it look like three individual frames. So that was essentially why the design is a little bit different. Um, one of these pieces of oak had a bow in it. So you can see I have it uh, tacked to my fence. That will keep it straight while this whole thing glues up. I could add a strap clamp, which is a really easy way to glue together frames. Put some other clamps on there to make sure that my dados are glued, um, secured to that plywood. Can let this all set up overnight, come in the next day um, and clean everything up. So that is the, the basic structure of the frame. So then to add the pieces on top, I'm gonna to be using once again oak, but I'm gonna split it into sections and then thin it out into about a quarter inch. The other reason I did this, if I did this design out of solid oak, you'd need really thick pieces of oak to get it. This is also very forgiving. As long as you have that outer frame, the top frame isn't as square as the outer frame, you could always sand it flush. So then all I'm gonna do is face the top side of this frame with oak. So I go through, I'm, I cut a corner, I could go to the other side, mark where to cut it, and then work my way around the frame. I know some people like to measure and cut all their pieces. With a lot of joinery, especially, especially miter joints, I just find it's easier to cut each mark and cut each corner individually and work my way around the frame. You see I have my, my top side and my bottom side, and then I could cut my two edges as well. And then these will just be tacked on place 
place on top of that frame. You can see what I mean now by having two separate frames. This is basically a facade on there. You could also see why I chose not to make it out of solid wood because it would just be too thick and it was easier to make the whole frame as one piece and split it up with those dados. Once this is stained, you won't really be able to tell that there is that top side frame on there. In this sort of design, there's really endless possibilities for, for, for making frames. Now, like I said, they're putting plaster cats, casts of paw prints in here. So before I put on those toppers, I pre-drilled and put some uh, hooks inside so they could hang those easily inside. Um, these oak does not go well with these um, thinner brass hardware. So I really made sure to pre-drill with the proper size drill bit before I put it in. Otherwise those will snap off if you just try and um, put them in without, without pre-drilling. Now once all that was in place, I could glue my frame. I have um, a brad nailer, but I decided to just attach the entire top side with clamps so there was no visible uh, hardware, even though it's really hard to see those brads. So that is basically what that looks like. I used plenty of clamps, so I know I got the proper pressure. And then once the outside frame was in place, the same exact uh, lumber, I could cut the, the portions for the inner side. And then I have now my three separate shadow boxes. Like I said, so it's almost about two inches thick now, that whole frame. While that was in place, I happened to have, it wouldn't have mattered, I could have used some sort of birch, but since you will see through this, um, there's not gonna be a, a picture in the back, I did wanna use oak um, backer, so that will be stained as well. And then that was pretty simple, my, my frame square, I just measured my length and my width, I cut that, and then I could add stain to this. Now I am gonna apologize at this point. Um, most of these projects are for the holidays. I'm in a mad rush to get everything done. So the footage of I have of this, this is the last bit. You see what it looks like, but I didn't include um, adding the plexiglass or clear coating it. So like I said, I do apologize. The basic gist of building this is there but um, I'm gonna recreate this and I did this today and I have this frames I delivered over a month ago. Once that stain dried, I put this water-based top coat on. This is kind of my top coat of choice these days. It's a little more expensive, but it's really nice. I let that oil-based stain dry for almost 72 hours to make sure it's thoroughly dried. For the Plexi, I usually use thicker Plexi that you get at Lowe's, but I saw this thinner stuff um, on Amazon. It was really inexpensive and I liked it. I had cut it with a box cutter, but it actually is thin enough that you can cut it with some snips without it cracking. And that just made life a lot easier than having to use um, a Plexi cutter to cut all this. And like I said, it was really inexpensive. Um, it's It's gotta be easily at a 16th of an inch or thinner. And then you can't see it, obviously, because the frame is now at the customer, but to put this plexi in place, that lip on the oak created um, a place for the plexi to set. And then I just cut small scraps of wood um, and put it in four spots around that plexi and nailed it in place.